Hey, you guys. How you doing? Nice to see you. Glad you're here. Glad I'm here. Back at the wheel again. One of my favorite places right here, making all the things on the pottery wheel. Today, got a little special project going. I have a customer that has ordered some dog and cat bowls. So I'm going to do a quick little tutorial on how to make a dog bowl. What makes a good dog bowl? That is the first question you should ask yourself. Here's my Funko clay. I am using more clay than I normally would for a bowl of a similar size. Why? What makes a good dog bowl is its lack of ability to tip over. If you give a dog like a regular old bowl, they're going to knock it over like every time. And also another thing that goes into the decision is how big the animal is, the dog or cat is. Typically cats are not very big, so small bowls like cereal bowl size, maybe slightly larger. You always want those to be wide and heavy on the bottom as well. The kind of thing that differentiates an animal bowl from a regular bowl. All right, so I got a little more clay than I normally would. We are going for a medium sized dog bowl. So we're gonna be coming out uh, about here, maybe about seven, seven inches or so. Uh, these pins, these two circular pins, this right here is 10 inches on the circle. But we're not going to come out that far because we're going for medium. If I was going for a, a large dog bowl, I'd come all the way out to the, the pants and go with 10 inches. With shrinkage, that would end up being about nine, eight and a half, nine inches wide. But we do not want our dog bowl to be that big. This is going to be a medium boy dog bowl. All right. So as with most bowls, and especially these, we want to start out with a wider stance than normal. By wider stance, I mean like with a cup or something vertical, I'd be like right here. Whereas, you know, when I'm centering, I want to be nice and wide because we're going to be pulling it out wide and we're actually going to be coming in. Another thing that helps you when you're opening up these wider bases like this is using a lot more water than you normally would for say more of a cylinder type form. Coming on out, we're getting close to that seven inches right about there. And another cue on these bowls is you want, or any any kind of wide, shallow bowl at the base is you want a lot of compression here on the base, especially here where the wall touches, um, the wall touches the base. If you're going to get any cracks on these and drying, you're much more likely to get them uh, right, right here in the, right in that corner along the edge. Good compression also can help you prevent S cracks. So we're out wide, got a lot of compression on the base, and now it's time to pull the wall. So ideally we're gonna come in. So coming in is gonna help prevent that bowl from flipping over as it gets bumped. And coming in, and also we don't wanna make it just so thin either. To increase the durability of our bowl, we're not gonna take it as thin as we would any any other kind of bowl and that is where we're at right there all righty let us trim this thing up let's see what we got get the water out always a crucial thing let me scoot my head over a little bit sorry so you can see the <laughs> see the side camera i just changed my setup today so i'm not used to the things being where the things should be so. sorry about that hey if you're curious about how to make a thing on the pottery wheel Hit me up in the comments. I was over there making my orders for the day, which was like a whole bunch of mugs, two planters, and a and two dog bowls, basically. All right, trim time. So we do this. I, I trim all my stuff basically by hand. I don't put anything back on the pottery wheel. I feel like it saves a lot of time. So I try to get things very clean right here on the pottery wheel. The cleaner you get it here, the easier your job is later on. So. About as clean as it gets right there. And notice we have a bowl. It's pretty much straight up and down. Comes in just a little bit. The base, uh, I've left the bottom a bit thicker just so there's a lot more or a little more weight down there to keep the bowl from tipping up and down. It's gonna be a lot harder for the animal to push it around, flip it up and over. And I have left the wall a bit thicker than I normally would, just a regular old human bowl. And we're done. Boom. Let's uh, see what kind of cameras I got. Wrong one. And boom. There we are. Our completed dog slash cat bowl. Thank you guys for watching.
Come hang out with me in the next one. Or live. I'm live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday about 9 a.m. Central. See you then. Bye.